Now, a group of more than 50 broadcast journalists have sent an open letter to the embassies of Israel and Egypt calling for free and unfettered access to Gaza for foreign media. The letter sent by correspondents and presenters from the main broadcasting outlets based in the UK also appeals for better protection for journalists already reporting in the territory. 55 journalists have signed the letter, including Sky News's Alex Crawford, the BBC's Jeremy Bowen, Orla Guerin and Fergal Keane, as well as CNN's Christian Amanpour. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now by Alex Crawford, who joins us from Erbil in Iraq. Uh, she is, of course, Sky News's special correspondent and, as we've just been saying, is among the signatories of the letter. Thank you very much for joining us, especially while you're on deployment, Alex. Just tell us what the rationale was behind this letter to begin with. Well, the main thinking is that we're all terribly frustrated and feel we're not really doing um, ourselves um, justice, we're not doing the story justice, and people aren't hearing um, particular information because foreign journalists aren't on the ground. And this is despite multiple attempts to try to get access into Gaza since October the 7th. From October the 7th onwards, there have been um, groups of people, teams of people, media organisations from all over the world trying to get access into Gaza, and we haven't been able to. And that definitely compromises what is probably one of the most important developing events in um, certainly in the region for many, many decades, possibly in the world, and will have ramifications for many years to come. Alex, you've travelled the world with your reporting and you're in Iraq at the moment. How unusual is it in your experience and through your career to have been unable to access an area, particularly one that is the centre of a major story? I think it's uh, not unusual that some uh, governments and some regimes will try to keep you out. And that presents uh, definitely a challenge for for journalists to try and report accurately inside. But we, in the past, and even now, we're talking about uh, governments or authorities or regimes that do not describe them as themselves as democracies, which Israel does describe itself as. Israel is proud of um, boasting that it is uh, a liberal democracy with an open media, and yet it is deliberately blocking uh, journalists from all over the world from getting into Gaza. That is the key difference. I mean, in the past, journalists like myself have had to use boats to get into Myanmar, have had to use uh, all sorts of, of, of tactics to try to get inside closed off areas. And we've managed it. This one is monumentally difficult because it is an extremely small area that we're talking about. There are only two border points and it is really, really very massively locked down by Israel uh, and also by Egypt. And seriously, most governments around the world should be worried about that. And I was just reading, because you wrote a blog, didn't you, for the Sky News website, that you said that last month the Foreign Press Association attempted to persuade the Israeli High Court to uh, allow journalists in, but it was refused for security concerns. Tell us more about what they said uh, to you after that ruling then. Well, it was the Supreme Court of, of Israel, and it was brought by the Foreign Press Association. As I said, there have been multiple attempts by not only the big media organisations around the world, but also individuals, individual journalists, um, uh, BBC Sky, ITN, ITV, all signed, Channel 4, all signed a letter in November as well, none of which have had any impact or made a jot of difference. The Supreme Court said the, the, that um, they couldn't... Um, they, they wouldn't lift the restrictions imposed by the IDF, and the IDF argued that this was because journalists could be put at risk in wartime and they could endanger soldiers by reporting on troop positions and that it's too dangerous for Israeli personnel to be present at the border to facilitate press entry into Gaza. Well, of course, all those um, arguments uh, you could be posed in any war and... and, and Sometimes they are, and usually they're by countries or regimes or authorities who definitely do not want journalists in. And I would argue, along with um, the more than 50 other journalists, and they are the top 
most well-known journalists in Britain, Jeremy Bowen, a, a number of presenters like Rita Chakravarti, Clive Myrie, Michelle Hussein, as well as Tom Bradbury on ITN, uh, all the key um, war correspondents on ITN, Emma Murphy, Johnny Irvine, Channel 4, Lindsay Hilson, Matt Fry, uh, Krishnan Gurumurthy. There are a list of the top, most senior journalists who've been respected and proved their credentials the world over for many years, who've all become very worried about the lack of access into Gaza and what that means on telling uh, an unfolding event and telling it accurately. accurately. Mm. There are some very serious allegations against Israel, uh, allegations of war crimes, allegations of genocide, which was presented in, in, before the, the ICJ, the International Court of Justice. Now, until we get proper, independent, um, impartial foreign journalists on the ground there, it's going to be very difficult to disprove or prove those allegations. So we would argue it's in Israel's interest as well to allow the free movement of, of independent journalists. And, of course, the argument is that the, there are Palestinian journalists in there. Uh, that's true. But on, uh, in every big story, anywhere, even if you're covering the G8 summit or the Olympics or party conferences in Britain, you would send uh, a, a whole group of journalists to rotate through, to refresh, to re-energise, to recharge. Now, those Pal Palestinian journalists inside... Um, many of whom have lost their homes, are scrabbling on a day-to-day -day basis to, to get food and water to mm -hmm. just stay alive, uh, need refreshing and we need more input from outside. Indeed, I wanted to, to ask you that uh, before we end this interview, because yesterday, about 24 hours ago, in fact, Rushdie Abu Alouf was sitting next to me here in the studio, um, sharing his you know, challenges, uh, because it's a personal tragedy, um, but he wanted to stay as long as he could to bring that story to us from the ground. But let's not forget the huge risks that the uh, journalists who remain in Gaza currently face. There, are high, there is an extremely high and very worrying attrition rate of journalists inside Gaza, and that is also something that needs investigating, with many, many claims and a, a large amount of evidence suggesting that they have been targeted specifically and their families because they're journalists. Now, until we get access into Gaza, we also cannot prove or disprove those, and those suspicions will continue, and it's extremely worrying for just independent accurate information. If uh, journalists inside are being uh, accused of not only being biased or partisan or being coerced by Hamas at the same time as there are also accusations that they're being targeted by the Israeli military, there needs to be uh, immediate sort of independent access to uh, an unfettered access to foreign journalists to either put these allegations to bed or prove them. Alex Crawford, we admire you hugely here at the BBC. Thank you very much for the work you do and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News.